let's check out a simple example in order to con understand continuous random variables. So in this example, we have a bus, and it runs anywhere from 0 to 20 minutes late, and its lateness is uniform. So if we want to draw out its uh, P PDF, then it would look like this. It's going to take on values 0 to 20 with some height here as its PDF, and then outside of 0 to 20, the PDF is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so since it's uniform, we have just a flat line here, a flat horizontal line, and in order to like write down this PDF, we need to figure out what is the height of this line. So we know that here this is 0, and we're wondering what is this height here. Okay, so let's use a property about PDFs. If we integrate over the entire PDF, then that has to be equal to 1. So in other words, 1 is equal to the integral of this function from 0 to 20, uh, integrating with respect to t. So if we call this height k, and we're trying to figure out what is k, then we can write our integral as 0 to 20, k dt. And of course, integrating this, we get k times t evaluated from 0 to 20. So we get 20k minus 0k, which is just 20k. All right, so we have this equality. 1 equals 20k. So that means that k is equal to 120, 1 over 20. So now we can write down our PDF. Our PDF is going to be f of t is equal to 1 over 20 when t is between 0 and 20, and 0 when t is not in this interval. So in other words, 0 otherwise. All right, so we have our PDF. Now we can use it to calculate some probabilities. So let's define x, our random variable, to be the number of minutes that this bus is late. So first, let's figure out what's the probability that the bus is between 0 and 5 minutes late. All right, so we're wondering, what's the probability that the bus is between 0 and 5 minutes late? What we're going to do is integrate over this function between 0 and 5. Okay, so this is just the equivalent because we have a nice uniform and then this is a just rectangle. We can calculate this area pretty easily because we know the area of a rectangle is just length times width. All right, so we know that this height here is 1 over 20, and of course we know from 0 to 5 that width is 5. So the probability that x is between 0 and 5 is just 5 times 1 20th. All right, if we wanted to, we could have written this instead with an integral, just like before. So if we want, we could write 0 to 5, 1 20th dt. And so we'd get t over 20, and we evaluate t between 0 and 5. So we'd get, again, 5 over, over 20 minus 0. So same answer, whether we want to just think about this, uh, the visual way or using an integral. All right, how about the probability x is between 0 and 20? So we're looking for this entire area here. Well, actually, we already calculated this. We know that the probability that x is between 0 and 20 is just this integral. We're integrating from 0 to 20, and we're integrating the number 1 over 20. We already figured that out, and so this is just going to be equal to 1. Okay, let's think about now what's the probability that a bus is 20 to 30 minutes late. Okay, if it has to follow these rules, then the probability that the bus is 20 to 30 minutes late, we're going to have to integrate over this from 20 to 30. But, of course, this is at zero, so 20 to 30 integrating over 0 dt, this is just going to be definitely 0. So we can show this using an integral, or we can think about it just in terms of the problem itself. It says that the bus is anywhere from 0 to 20 minutes late. So the bus cannot be more than 20 minutes late. So that's why the probability that it's more than 20 minutes late, 20 to 30 minutes late, is 0. All right, now let's think about what's the probability that the bus is exactly 10 minutes late. 
result, we're trying to find essentially the area of this line. But uh, lines don't have any area, and so this is going to be equal to zero. Another way you can think about it is with the integral. So we're going to integrate from 10 to 10, 1 over 20 dt. So we have t over 20, and we're evaluating between 10 and 10. So we get 10 over 20 minus 10 over 20, which is, of course, 0. All right, so the probability that a bus is exactly zero min uh, 10 minutes late is going to be equal to 0. And we can generalize this. If we look at any continuous random variable, the probability that this random variable is going to be equal to some real number is 0 for any real number there. All right, so what does this mean? One uh, consequence of this is that if we want to calculate the probability that x is between two values a and b, we can either write strict or um, non-strict inequality. So in other words, we could have less than or equal to, or we could have a strict less than sign. Okay, so if we choose any real numbers a and b such that a is less than b, then we could calculate the probability that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b. And we can split this up into the probability that x is equal to a plus the probability x equals b plus the probability a is less than, strictly, x is strictly less than b. All right, so we just figured out that the probability that x is equal to some value a is 0. And similarly, the probability that x is equal to b is 0. So this means that we just have the probability that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b is equal to the probability that a is less than x is less than b. So in other words, when you're working with continuous random variables and you want to write out the probability that that random variable is in some interval, it doesn't matter whether you write it with strict or not strict inequalities. So this is definitely different from the discrete case. In the discrete case, it definitely mattered whether we wrote x is strictly less than 10 or x is less than or equal to 10.